In this video, we're going to find out how to replace the Apache HTTP library in Android Studio with an HTTP URL connection, which is now more common. If you're like me, you might have written an app uh, under Android 2.2 or Android 4.0 or somewhere in that neighborhood and used at the time what was common, which is Apache HTTP. And then all of a sudden you upgrade your app to, uh, say, build version 23 or greater, somewhere around Marshmallow, and suddenly it breaks. It doesn't compile anymore because it doesn't recognize these classes here because this is no longer the preferred way to do a, a connection, an HTTP connection. In my app, uh, what happens is as soon as we go to the first screen, it goes to a JSON stream and attempts to download some plant names to pre-populate a dropdown. That JSON stream, which is a live stream if you want to try any of this out on your own, but that JSON stream looks like this. It's plantplaces.com slash curl slash mobile slash viewplantsjson.pl question mark and then genus equals uh, Acer. You can also search by common names, species, other things, but Acer is a maple. You see if I put in Corcus, which is oak, we get different results. Nonetheless, the job of the app is to go out, fetch this data, uh, parse it from JSON into Java objects, and then use that to pre-populate and auto-complete. The only problem is when I change my build.gradle and update it to build version 22 or 23, no dice here. So how do we fix it? Well, what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to remember our goal is to return a string. I'm going to remove everything else because, unfortunately, we can no longer use that. Now, we're going to need to assemble this string. So I'm going to create a string builder at the top. New string builder at the top of this class, and that will help us uh, to manage memory as we're appending strings together. And then what we're going to return is sb.toString. Now, we need to fill in the details in the middle, which is where it gets a little bit tricky. First of all, what we're passing in here is a string that represents that URL that I just showed you, the one that's showing JSON. So let's start by wrapping that in a URL. I'm going to say URL, URL equals new URL, and then pass in the argument from up above, URI, just like so. And there we go. Next, I'm going to say URL dot open connection which means let's open a connection to this location remember the shortcut in android studio to save data from a method into a variable hold Control alt and press v when the cursor is on the method so this is going to return url connection i'm going to make a slight modification to the to the uh, type here i'm going to call it http url connection just a little bit more specific uh, as soon as I do that, I'm going to get a red line because I have to cast because HTTP URL connection is a more specific type of connection. Alt enter, fill in the cast, and we're good. Okay, now, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to read the data from this. So if I say URL connection dot get input stream, I will confess, even as someone who's worked with Java for quite a long time, when I deal with input stream and buffered reader and all the things we're going to have to deal with, they don't all make perfect sense to me. It seems like a bit of boilerplate stuff. But nonetheless, we're going to get this input stream and we're going to wrap it in a new buffered input stream, which means we don't have to read it all at once, which is a bit better on memory. Now we're going to need to save that into a buffered, uh, sorry, we'll save it into an input stream. Okay, like so. Okay, now this input stream, we're going to pass to a buffered reader. And this is where I say, I know I end up with a lot of words that sound similar here. If nothing else, just run to GitHub. I'll put the link in the video comments. Feel free to copy this and use this as your own instead of typing it all out from scratch. So I'm going to say buffered reader, B-I-N, equals new buffered reader. And then in the constructor argument for that, new input stream reader. And in that, I pass in the input stream that we've declared up above on line number 34. Okay, getting closer. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a temporary string to hold each line. Read from the reader. Okay, I'm going to say string input line. Okay, and then I'm going to say while input line 
equals bin dot read line. So we're reading one line at a time from this HTTP connection. We're saving that line into the string called input line. And we just want to keep reading until we reach the end. How are we going to know when we reach the end? When this entire construction here returns null. So while it's not null, let's keep reading. And again, I know this is this is a whole lot of crazy syntax, but trust me, it works, and we'll see it working in just a minute. Now, as we read the line in, we want to add it to our string builder. So I'm going to say sb.append, and we are going to append the input line. Okay. Uh, oops. One more thing, then. I do want to close the connection here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of an interesting thing with a try. I'm going to say try. We often think of try as a try catch. This, we're not going to catch anything because we're already throwing IO exception, which is exactly what we want to do. If we get an exception here while we're trying to read and we cannot fix the exception, there's nothing we can do about it locally. Let's do our job and inform the person who called us that something wrong happened. Let's go ahead and rethrow the exception instead of catching it and burying it and then returning as if nothing wrong happened. We want to inform the caller something didn't work. Uh, so, the, so we're not going to bother with the catch, but we are going to do this, a finally. And that means whether an exception is thrown or not, we're at least going to come down to this finally, and we're going to say URL dot, um, sorry, URL connection dot disconnect. So regardless of if it went well or did not, and I'll put this in the comment, regardless of success or failure, we will disconnect from the uh, URL connection. Now, if we're successful, we get to the return statement and we return the output of this entire read operation. If it's unsuccessful, we throw the exception back, which tells the caller, hey, there was a problem. So now I'm gonna save and deploy. And when I deploy, we're gonna step through this in the debugger. As a matter of fact, I'll snap a breakpoint uh, let's snap one at the closer to the top of the method so that we can actually watch all this happen. There we go. A breakpoint there. I'm also going to just verify I have a, yeah, I have a breakpoint here and I'll snap a breakpoint here. Just a couple extra. One thing I will note when I designed this, um, honestly, six years ago, I put all of this read operation in this class called network DAO. And the idea is that anybody who needed to open a URL uh, and get a stream of data back would call this in one central location. So we would not have this code copy and pasted all over our app every time we had to open a URL. In hindsight, I'm very glad I did that because you see, as the underpinnings have changed, we only need to change it in one place in this low level network DAO and everybody who's uh, accessing URL data is calling this one place, only need to maintain it once. Okay, so uh, let's see where we are. Uh, we have, the app is loading now, and you see we have a wait box indicating it's downloading plant names. So uh, the published progress is what's, is what's uh, adding to that wait box and telling it how many we've downloaded. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna F8, and notice we're in GPS a plant. Once again, GPS a plant is the activity we're looking at now. We're going to F7 down into this plant DAO fetch plants method. Okay. And take a look. There's the URL that we're calling. It's very similar to the one I showed earlier. This one just uses combined name, which will let you put in genus, species, or a common name, any name you wish. Um, just a little more flexible URL. But Nonetheless, that's our JSON URL. Uh, okay, so we come up with the URL, and here's the important part. At this point, we're walking into the network DAO that I just edited. F7 to step into that. Create our string builder. Connect to the URL. Okay, open the connection. Read the data in. Okay, F8. And now iterate over each line and append it to the string. It's a little hard to see, but if you take a look up at input line, uh, look at the kind of the orange, the light orange test key, uh, text here, you'll notice that each time I'm iterating, it is showing us a different plant, okay? 
So it's one line at a time, iterating one line at a time. Uh, just to confirm what we're actually looking at, let me grab this URL and let's look at that exact URL combined name equals E. And this is going to take just a moment because it does need to uh, download all of the plans. They're about uh, how many plans do we have now? Probably yeah, about 4,000. So uh, it's, it's downloading each of these plans. It's reading each of these lines one at a time. And that's what we're iterating over right now. Now, obviously, for the length of the video, I'm not going to hit F8 uh, that many times. But what I can do is I can snap my cursor down at the, at the very last line here. And I can say run, run to cursor, Alt F9. And you see, actually, if I'm not walking through it, it doesn't take too long. But nonetheless, we finally come up with a string that represents all of the JSON we saw on that prior page. So I'm going to go ahead and choose F8, which just says finish up here. String request. Let's take a look at this guy. Probably quite big, to be honest with you, because it represents that entire page, all 4,000 plants. Now what we're going to do, and I put this together in a previous video if you're curious about the JSON. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through the JSON and we're going to create plant objects out of the JSON by parsing that string. So I will just go through and it's going to have to create a new plant DTO. In other words, this loop that I'm currently iterating over. Let me put on line numbers so you can see that iteration a little bit better. So it's going to loop once for all of those roughly 4,000 plants. It's going to parse them into JSON, which is the first part that we see here, where it gets the JSON and it pulls the values out individually. Then down below on line 48 through 53, it creates a new plant object and then it passes in the values that it parsed out of JSON up above. Again, if you want to see details, I have a separate video that covers that. Um, in the same playlist you're watching now. The only thing is the video uses the older Apache HTTP library. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, once again, I'm going to run the cursor. We're going to let that parse finish. So uh, I'm going to go to my run the cursor. Okay. And now I'm going to choose F8, which takes me back to the user interface class that kicked this whole thing off. F8 and at this point, it has populated all plants. Now take a look at this. Do you see all plants has a size of 3,809 elements? Okay. And each one of those elements represents one of those lines on the JSON stream we saw earlier. This guy right here. So we've read in this entire stream as a string. We have parsed it uh, into JSON from JSON. We took values out and created objects out of that. We took those objects and we put them in this array or actually array list called all plants. And now we have a series of Java objects that came from that JSON stream. So I'll tell you what, I'll probably do a follow-up video that just looks at the JSON independently. But at this point, at least, you see how to replace the old Apache HTTP library with HTTP URL connection. I'll put the GitHub link and the playlist link in the comments. Thank you for watching.